Roy Richards is in the house. He is the um, head football coach at Morton High School of the previously number three ranked Morton Governors. Um, they were winning 26 to 10 and seemingly uh, coasting along to victory on Friday night and wound up losing 30 to 26 to the Munster Mustangs. Roy, how you feeling right now? Uh, none of us are feeling great. We got to get a win before we put a smile back on our face. Um, you're up 26 to 10. You continued yeah. to pass the ball. Yeah, it's what we did. We, we, it's what we do well. It's what we were doing well. Um, I think really up to that point, we were playing some of the best football we've played. It, I just don't see any reason to stop doing what you're doing well. And um, our team just has to understand that Munster's a great team. I said this last week. They're going to play really hard. Um, you can't let up. You can't turn it off mentally. As soon as you do, a great team gets ahead of you, and, and it's really hard to turn it back on and get the win. So we learned a lesson, and congratulations to Munster. Munster uh, was the only team to really give Lake Central a game so far. Lake Central steamrolling through everyone, even through the Doonlin Conference, which is almost unheard of. And uh, I did see that first game, and I thought, Munster really has some athletes. They've had some bad uh, – they're probably what the best – are they 2-3 and three or 2-4 and four right now? They're 2-3. Two 2-3, and, three. Two and, and three, the best 2-3 and three team in the state well, possibly. exactly. We said that last week. We said the, th the three teams they lost to, Chester and Andrea and Lake Central, would probably beat just about everybody in our region. So we knew we were facing a really tough test. And um, at no point do you ever underestimate your opponent. You have to play good football and – and we really fought after watching our film the first three quarters. We did. We didn't put them away when we had a chance, and and that's really where it comes back to get you. Because once they turn it on and do a good job, you can't credit. You can't fault your team for not being able to withstand that fourth quarter. We should have been in a position where that didn't matter. But that's a, a credit to them. You played three. You say you played three three solid uh, quarters. What did, what did you guys do right for three quarters? I thought we defended the the the, the option great in the first three quarters. Um, we didn't allow a first down up until about three minutes left in the first half. Um, I thought the turning point was at the end of the first half when we had him pinned down and he scrambled for 68 yards. And then on third and goal, he threw a pass in the end zone and our kid could have had a chance for an interception and we didn't get it. And they made the, ex they made the field goal. Then we got the ball and did the same thing to them, drove all the way down on third and goal. We threw a pass and we didn't catch it and then missed our field goal. So there, there was a 10-point swing there that – you know, going in at halftime up 20 to nothing as opposed to 12 to 3, that's huge. And then um, we, we still had chances. But, you know, I think it, you always have to credit teams that make plays when it matters. And um, the same situation happened last year. We were up 18 to 7 at their place, and they started to mount a comeback. And our team found a way to, to, to get a stop and to get a score to, to increase the lead. So we didn't do that this week. And, um, you know, lesson learned. I saw one of your comments in the paper was, um, not that you want a loss ever, but that perhaps there are some positives that you could take out of this. What would those be? I, I think our team has been kind of flirting with the, we can't lose, we're never going to lose. And if you look at weeks one and two with Griffith and Lowell, both times we had the lead and the ball and didn't put it away and had to have a get, get a stop and run the clock out where on either one of those games, if we didn't get the stop, we lose. And, uh, you know, we kept harping onto our kids about finishing the game, getting the stop, getting the score, putting it out of reach. We hadn't been doing that. And then Friday, once again, it was 26 to 24 us. We had the ball. We had a chance to drive down, answer, and get the score and put it out of reach, and we didn't do it. Um, they scored, and then we mounted a huge comeback to come back to the 15-yard to the line. But even then, I wasn't happy. I mean, we called a play that we thought was going to work, and, and we really thought it was should have worked. But even, even if we had caught it, I wasn't happy. We didn't put it away when we had a chance, and that's what we're going to have to do when we get down later in the tournament and we play a good team that has us on the ropes. A crucial third down here or there, that has to be converted for us to be a legitimate uh, state contender. Roy Richards, head football coach at Morton High School. Uh, he's not here to talk football, but we will talk football because not only did he play a big game on Friday, he's got one coming up this Friday, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Hey, Paul, how are you? Hey, Jed, how you doing? What do you think? Hey, Coach, how are you doing? Well, I think I probably saw one of the best games of the season last Friday against Munster and Morton. And uh, a key in that game to me was I believe that Munster finally put pressure on that offensive line like they need to. They penetrated those guys. 
that's why they were getting burned with the pass. And then their corners finally stepped up a little bit for them. Um, I mean, Munster's got some lethal weapons out there. And Stribiak, Hilbert going both sides of the ball. He, I mean, the guy's an animal. And they have some injuries out there on the other side on the defensive end. But, again, I'm glad you guys mentioned, I don't really believe – Munster got beat by anybody this year except for uh, Chesterton. Chesterton. Yeah. I, I think they gave the games away to LC along with Andrean game. They were in both of those games, and they are a very tough opponent. And why was it, it was such a great football game? And Paul, why was it such coach. a good? Why was it such a good game? It just because they were the, Munster wanted it. Munster needed it, and Morton is an incredible opponent to play against. I mean, the coach has mentioned before on his show, he's got an incredible staff working with him, and you can see it in those kids. I honestly think they may have taken Munster just a little bit lighter than what they should have. I right, leave it right there. Did you take Munster lighter than you well, should I, have? I appreciate the comments, Paul. I, we don't take anybody lightly, especially Munster. I, I think it's human nature to be up 26 to 10 and have kids relax mentally. I, certainly not something you preach, but you, you're, you're concerned with that. For the first three quarters, things came pretty easily to us, and that was a concern. Once Munster answered and responded, it was hard to get the urgency back into our kids, and I think that's human nature. But the comments that he made are correct. Um, I appreciate him saying we're a, a good opponent, and I think we are. I, I don't know if Munster gave those games away. I think you could probably, as a Morton fan, say Morton gave this one away. I think you have to give credit to the opponents that take advantage of certain situations, and um, – and, and, and that's really what happened. We had opportunities to put the game away, and we didn't. The teams that beat Munster had opportunities to put them away, and they did. And that's really the difference. Munster hangs in there, and they fight. They're tremendously coached, and, and they've got great kids. And you know if you leave the door open, they're going to come in. So you have to do a better job if you get ahead of somebody of that caliber to put it away and take away their spirit because if you don't, they're going to hang around. They, made, they had two touchdowns in two plays. They didn't have to drive down the field except for that last drive to beat us. So they, they got quick and easy success that got them back in the game. And you, you just have to credit them and you tell your kids that this is stuff. Coach, you, you play ham and them. high on Friday. And I got to tell you, I had Eric Schreiber in here over the summer. Uh, he comes in here, all my guys are working hard. I'm like, what, well, what are you thinking about, Eric? What are you guys talking about? And this was August 5th. He says, we want to be Morton. That was, I mean, and and quite frankly, I felt like saying, you know, Eric, you know, they're kind of out of your league, and and you know, I mean, maybe you can have a little more modest um, aspirations, but I didn't say that to him. You never put your, you know, you don't want to do that to anybody. And uh, here we are, uh, sixth week of the season. Hammond High is five and zero. Oh, Morton is four and one. And the folks on Calumet Avenue think they got a chance. You're going over to their home. They think they got a chance to take you down. What do you think? I think everybody has a chance. You know, I think that we proved that Friday when you're up 16 points and, and, and somebody comes back at your own place and, and catches you. Um, I think it's going to come down to, you know, our players and, and wanting to defend the title and, and wanting to get better. Um, I, I honestly believe that, that Hammond High is going to have a lot of confidence and they're playing very well. Eric's a great guy. He's a great coach. I remembered you said that about him saying that, so I did not specifically did not buy him breakfast on Saturday. Usually I would have done that. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, I told our kids every person in Ham is going to be wearing purple on Friday. I don't know what it is, but everybody perks up in football around here when Ham and High's got a good team, and uh, and it's going to happen. So it's going to be up to us to go over there and, and make sure that the people. Uh, Ray Richards is in the house. We've talked enough football. Let's talk education. Explain to people what you have in your hand. Uh, we've got five new words of the week. I, I did get some good tips from an uh, uh, English teacher at Morton High School, Angie Jacobs, and she said, you know, kind of like with football, teach repetition. You know, always, always have to introduce new words. So what we're doing is we've got one new word. We've got two that we've already repeated from this this year, and we have two that we introduced last year. So we're going to try a trend where we're going to try to hit a couple new words, a couple of repeats from this year, and, and maybe a couple from last year and keep keep the uh, reinforcement going. 
The first word is skeptical. This is a repeat from a week or two ago. Having or showing doubt, being unconvinced. We are very skeptical of anyone who claims they can excel in Mr. Hosell's class without studying for his tests. Jim Hosell is a great teacher for us here at Morton High School. The second word is detached. Uh, I put this back one in because a lot of people think detached. We had one person that thought detached is you take your arm away from your torso. So obviously we're not all of us are getting this definition. To be separated or dis separated from or disinterested, unemotional. I found it impossible to be detached from the emotional ceremony when Amazing Grace was being played on the bagpipes before the game on Friday night. Great ceremony Friday night with the veterans and the police and firemen 9-11. They had a great, they, they played um, taps on the bugle and Amazing Grace on the bagpipes. And uh, there's just no way you couldn't get caught up in the emotion. The third word, this is the new word, apprehensive, uneasy or fearful, being nervous. The crowd became very apprehensive when Munster scored to take the lead in the game Friday night. Sorry, man, that hurt if I had to use that one. The fourth one, camaraderie. This was a repeat from last year. A spirit of friendliness or good fellowship. Our team has developed a strong sense of camaraderie after playing so long and hard together. And the last one is also a repeat from last year. Elaborate. To develop thoroughly or to expand upon. Mrs. Ramsey asked Farron to elaborate on why he did not finish his assignment. So those are our five words of the week at Morton High School. All right, Roy Richards, thanks for coming in. Uh, good luck on a good competition on uh, Friday night. Uh, Hammond High is, the entire school is levitating, thinking that you're coming over there. And uh, I don't know, we're looking forward to it, put it that way. I appreciate it. We love wearing white. We love being uh, on, on the road. So it uh, looks, looks forward to a good game. All right, guys, thanks a lot.